Ezekiel chapter number 33, uh, and I want to read the first eight verses here in, in this chapter, and I want us to look closely at what's being said here. You know, uh, God has called each of us as His uh, as His watchman on the wall. He's given us a job to do as His children, and I pray that we would do just exactly what it is that God would have us to do. You know, we have a message. And that message is about somebody, and that somebody uh, is someone, and that someone is Jesus. Yes, amen. Uh, we have a message, and I pray that we'll take that message, not only from missionaries all around the world, but through our own witness, amen. through our own example, in all that we do and say. Look with me here in Ezekiel chapter number 33, and begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for a watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning of the sword, uh, come and take him away. His blood shall be upon his own head. He heard, uh, uh, excuse me, he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them, from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. We thank you for the wonderful song service that we've had so far. We thank you, God, how we can sing about your grace. We can sing uh, God, about your precious blood and the sacrifice that was made on Calvary. God, today I'm grateful for that sacrifice. I'm grateful, God, that you saw fit to save this old sinner boy. I'm so grateful, Lord, today uh, that I can call you my Lord and my Savior and the King of my life. Lord, hide me behind the center cross this evening. Lord, give us unction and power from on high to preach thy word. Encourage uh, the saint uh, tonight, I pray you would, uh, through the power of the Holy Ghost, anoint each of us to go out of these doors with a desire in our heart to be a witness, to be a watchman, one that sounds the trumpet of warning, uh, of judgment that is to come. Certainly, Father, we realize from reading the Word of God tonight that there's a heaven to gain, but there's also a hell to shun. Our world today wants to forget about that old place called hell, that old fiery uh, pit that you prepared for the devil and all those that rebelled against you with him. Lord, I pray that you would help us to see that it's a real, literal, burning place, God, yes, that you have yes. prepared. And the Bible says, your word says, Lord, that it enlargeth itself daily. And I pray, Father, that you would help each one of us, Lord, to realize the lost in our neighbors and our community. And Father, uh, go with us now and help us. And we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, I pray and ask all these things. Amen. And amen. Boy, it is good to be amongst you folks again tonight. Let me say before I get into the message, it's an honor to be standing in this pulpit. I, I love your preacher and I thank the world for this opportunity. Uh, and I just want to thank you folks for uh, putting up with us today and listening to the Word of God. I, I love the Bible. I tell you, I just love the Bible. And I, want, I just want to try to help you if I can tonight and, and give you something the Lord's laid on my heart. But we certainly face uncertain days, do we not? We, we face days, and uh, as you go into your workplace tomorrow, you may things may turn be turned upside down. You just do not know. Uh, it may be not too long that uh, a preacher will stand in the pulpit and, and be arrested for what he says. That's the world that we live in today. Everybody is offended about something, so, uh, and somebody uh, is bound to be offended about something else tomorrow. And I say to you tonight that if we will stand true to this book, if we will be that watchman that God has called each of us to be and sound the alarm of, of warning around this world to our neighbors, to our loved ones, to our co-workers, to our acquaintances, if we will sound the alarm to them, God will honor that. He will, he will not require their blood in our hand. And I pray that we would do just that tonight. You see, Ezekiel here that we're reading about is a prophet of God who was taken captive uh, by the Babylonians. 
Excuse me. He was. Uh, he prophesied that because of the sin of God's chosen people, Jerusalem would be destroyed. You see, this place that we're at in the world in the world today is no different than it was then. Yeah. Uh, the times have changed, but the problems are the same. Oh, and uh, I say to you tonight that we certainly face uncertain days, and it shouldn't be a surprise to us. Right. Because the Bible says that in the last days, perilous times will come. And I don't know about you, but perilous is not a very positive word. Yeah. It's not a word that speaks to good things happening. But it seems in our world today, folks, if I could stop here and say this, it seems that in our world today, the fear of God is gone. Yeah. There's no fear of Almighty God. There's no one that really fears what it is to call that place called hell. I say to you tonight that I was reading this week in a, in a book that was written in 1959 by Leonard Ravenhill, a good man of God. I mean, one that preached, didn't care what, what he, uh, who he, whose feelings he heard. I mean, he just preached. And, and uh, he was telling a story about, about this man that was on death row. And this man was on death row and he made his, his final walk down that row and, and uh, he was going to the, to the hangman's noose or, or whatever the form of, of execution was there that day and there was a, there was a chaplain that, was, that belonged to the prison that was walking in front of him lazily, sleepily reading something from the Bible. And the man that was on death row tapped the, the, the preacher on the shoulder and he said, do you believe what it is that you're reading? And he said, well, certainly I do. He said, if you really believe, he said, if you really believe what you're talking about, if you really believe that there is a place called hell, he said, you should be willing uh, to, if this country that we're in was covered from one end to the other with glass, you should be willing to uh, walk across that glass or crawl if need be for one soul to be saved. He said, if you truly believe that and want me to believe that, then why is there no tears flowing down your face? Why is there no uh, zeal? Why is there no excitement over the fact that somebody somewhere loved me beyond my recognition? Yeah. I say to you tonight that we have lost our passion for souls. We have, we have gotten comfortable in the house of God over singing a song and listening to the choir and hearing the preacher preach and going home and doing the same thing over and over and over again. Ezekiel said uh, here in his word, he tells us that he must be a watchman, that God has appointed him a watchman. You see, it's been said certainly and it's worth repeating that uh, the most important thing about prophets or the prophets of God is not that they had hindsight and not that they had foresight, but they had insight. My, my. And I say to you tonight that uh, uh, we need some insight in our day and age. We need somebody that will tell us Amen. what it is that needs to be done in this world. And I say, I, I want to just explain to you what I'm talking about. You see, hindsight uh, is important because it helps us deal with the past and understand what the Lord has done and why He did it. I, I say to you tonight that history uh, that is forgotten is bound to be repeated. Yeah. And that's where we are today in our society. We've forgotten that God brought us to a land of the, of the free and the home of the brave. We've forgotten what our forefathers went through uh, to come to this location so that we can have the liberty and the freedom that we have today. We've forgotten that it would do us some good to look back uh, on those days when those men and women made that arduous journey across the, uh, the great sea and, and they came to the place to where they landed there and, and they spent hours in prayer before they exited the ship. They spent time calling on God to bless and to do what's necessary and needful that they would have a perfect place to worship and praise Him. It's good to have a little hindsight in it. But it's also good to have a little foresight. You see, foresight helps us avoid trouble and to have hope for the future. Boy, I like to look ahead, don't you? I like to look ahead because when I look ahead, I see glory. I see the days that we're going to walk with right, Him right. and talk with Him. And we're going to know Him as He is. And we're going to be like Him. And we're going to enjoy the glory of heaven and see the beautiful splendor of all that God has created and placed there for you and me. But see, also, we must have some insight. We must have some insight. Insight helps us better understand ourselves and those around us. It reveals what we must do to become better men and women who follow and do the will of God. You see, over in chapter number 3 of the book of Ezekiel, 
in verse number 17, the Lord made Ezekiel a watchman. He said this, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. He says, it's not from you, Ezekiel. It's not your words that I want you to warn them with. Although I'm going to use your body as a vessel, I'm going to use your voice. But I want you to tell them what thus saith the Lord. Yes. And see here in verse number 1 of our text tonight, He reminds these people that it's not Ezekiel doing the talking. It's not Ezekiel that's telling uh, these folks that, that He's speaking to here uh, His own words. He says in verse 1 again, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, it wasn't Ezekiel. It was God that was doing the speaking. Again, Ezekiel makes it known. He makes it known that these are not my words. These words are from the mouth of Almighty God. And I say to you tonight that we're going to look a bit in just a few minutes in the New Testament. I know the Old Testament is, is over and done with. It's, it's hindsight, if you will. But it also can give us some foresight. Yes. And it can also give us some insight. Yes. As to what things, listen, as I said before, history that is forgotten is bound to be repeated. All you've got to do is look at the children of Israel, the kings of Israel, and how uh, Asa would come up and he would do that which was right in the eyes of God, and his son right behind him would do that which was evil. And then uh, Josiah just went on and on, Solomon, it went on and on, and they repeated and repeated and repeated those cycles. Why? Because they forgot where they come from. You see, it was God that brought those children of Israel through that wilderness. You think about this for just a minute. I don't know about you, but after 40 years, I believe my pair of shoes would be wore out. Don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, these here are just about gone. I mean, the heels gone on. I had had them long, but it, they carried a lot of weight. <laughs> but what I'm saying is this. The Bible says He watched after them. He cared for them. He said not even their clothes waxed old. Because He protected them and cared for them and led them. It wasn't, it wasn't Moses that was leading those people. It was God yes, that was it leading was. those people. And then in verses 2 and 3 of our text, we see the importance of the watchman. You see, again, the watchman is, is sounding the alarm of what God says is coming. But we see the importance of that watchman is to warn of coming judgment, of the coming judgment. To warn of the coming day of God's vengeance upon this earth. But I'm thankful tonight that I'm saved from the wrath that is to come. I don't know what that's going to be like because my Bible tells me that I won't be here while that's happening. There's going to come a day when Jesus is going to step out and He's going to say, come up hither. Well, I'm looking forward to that day. I mean, it could be right now. We are with me. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I think I've got some things I'd like to do, but I mean, if He wants to come today, that's fine with me. Be standing glory with you. But to, to warn of the coming judgment is the importance of the watchman. Mm -hmm. To warn. When I bring the sword upon the land, there has to be somebody that's watching. There has to be somebody that's paying attention. There has to be somebody that can see in the distance the armies of the enemy coming against us. And I say to you today that in our world, the army of the enemy is everywhere. Yes. I mean, he's in the music that we hear. He's in the he's in the commercials that are on our television. He's in the programs that are on our television. You know, uh, let me say this right here. I like the new Kentucky Fried Chicken commercials. Don't you? Yeah. Have y'all seen them? If your seatbelt is clicking, it's time to eat chicken. Now that's an announcement for a preacher, ain't it? I'm telling you what's the truth. But folks, listen, it's more than just chicken. Although I like chicken, but it's more than that. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. There's, there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's a story that we must sound out across the, across the land. You know, some people say, well, I, I'm embarrassed. I, 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 I don't know exactly what to say. Uh, just tell them your testimony. Yeah. Just tell your family. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors what God has done for you. That's what Paul did. Yeah. That's all he done. He just told them what God done for him. You see, when the sword comes, we need to be a warning, folks. We need, and listen, I don't believe it's very long. I think Gabriel's licking his lips. I mean, I really do. I think it's getting ready to happen at any moment. But see, instructions are given to each city and territory in verses 2 and 3 to ordain a man 
of their coach to be a watchman. Notice with me in verse 2. Son of man speaking to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if thy people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Now this is the type of the preacher of our New Testament. I say to you today that the preacher, uh, the deacon, the Sunday school teacher is a watchman. Yeah. He's to sound the alarm of the coming judgment of God. He's to explain to you and me uh, that the day of judgment is coming. We must be ready. We must have our have our uh, armor shine. We must have our sword sharp. We must be ready to meet the enemy at all costs. Yeah. The watchman is to watch diligently yes. for the enemy. And at the first sight, he's to sound the alarm. Blow the trumpet and warn the people. Can I say to you tonight, that's exactly what I'm trying to do Amen. here tonight. Amen. That's exactly what every preacher in the Word of God, I'm talking about preachers, you know there's three things that make a preacher want to preach. Brother Claudia, you know who I'm talking about. Preachers that can't preach. Yeah. Preachers that can preach. Yeah. And women that try. <laughs> that's the three things that will make me want to preach. And I tell you this morning, my wife gave me a compliment today and I'm going to share it with you. We was riding down the road and you know, we talk a little bit, but not much when we're riding down the road. You know how it is after the honeymoon's over. Uh, she looks out her side, and I look out my side, and that's just the way it goes. But she said today, she said, I love to hear you preach. Wow. Mm. That's like sinking a beetle on a rabbit, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, I, that, just, that just thrilled my soul to hear her say that. Uh, but you know, I want to be that watchman. Don't you? I mean, I want to sound the alarm. I want to tell this world that Jesus is coming, that He died for your sin, and that you, unless you trust Him as your Lord and Savior, will die in your sin and go to heaven. Yes. That's the message, by the way. That is the message that we must sound. But notice with me in verses 4 and 5. When the warning is sounded, there's some things that take place. The Bible says, Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, uh, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. We're clear of that. Yes, We're clear. We've told him. We've shared with him the gospel message. He heard the sound of the trumpet, verse 5, and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. I'm glad I took warning one day, aren't you? Oh, I'm glad that God rubbed my hand. I'm glad that he, he uh, reached further down than I could ever reach up. And pulled me out of the muck and the mire of this Amen. world. And set my feet on the solid rock which is Jesus Christ. Never, never to be lost to be Always to be saved. I'm telling you, I never doubted it till I got it. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. I mean, you know, I had that head knowledge, man. I was saved. I was saved just as, I was just as saved as anybody. Mm -hmm. But when God started reading my mail and looking at my diary that night, whenever He truly convicted my heart, and I got saved. Boy, I tell you, I've never been the same. That He done something inside of me that no yes, one else had ever done before. Yes, sir. He showed me things about myself that I don't ever want to see again. Yes, because they're washed in the blood of Jesus. They're gone. Sometimes it's hard for us to forgive ourselves and we remember those things that we've done. But I'm glad that He says, what sins are you talking yeah. about? I don't remember those sins anymore. I say to you, when the warning is sounded, the burden then is on the individual to act. On their own, uh, on their own to preserve themselves. It's up to them. We must warn them, though. See, I wonder how often we're guilty when the Lord nudges our heart to witness to that coworker, or to witness to that family member, yeah. or to witness to that that uh, that person in line at Walmart. How often do we say, "Well, maybe next time"? Mm -hmm. And see, we're not assured of what's going on in that person's life. That person may walk out of Walmart's doors and they may get in their car and they may go to the intersection and boom, that's the end of their life. That was the last opportunity that someone had to tell that somebody about the Lord. See, we'll stand accountable for that. I am guilty. I can't say that I'm not because there's been opportunities that I've let go. I've let pass in my life. All of us, I'm sure, can say that. But what I'm saying is, folks, we see the day approaching. We see the, the enemy coming. We see uh, the last days are upon us. We need to sound the warning. 
Yeah. We need to let this world know that uh, Jesus can save. And, and I know that our world today has gotten so many, so many things that have distorted and watered down and, and caused reproach and, right. and done all those things uh, 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 toward the things of God. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Christians have made people cold yes. to the things of God with their yes. lifestyle. Yes, sir. And I say to you tonight, we don't need to be that people. If you've wronged someone, if you've done something that might have been a stumbling block in their life, be the bigger person. Yeah. Go to that person and tell them, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, I said this when I shouldn't. But it seems in our world today that more people are, that people are more worried about a scratch on their car yeah. than they are about their neighbor's yeah. salvation. Yeah. More worried about, uh, more worried about uh, uh, where they're going to go on vacation than whether their mama or daddy or grandma or grandpa or brother or sister is saved. My, my More concerned with those things. Oh, we need to sound the alarm. He says in verse number 5, He heard the sound of the trumpet and he took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. That doesn't change the burden that we have. That ought not to change the burden that we have for that individual. We should continually witness. We should continually tell them about Jesus' love and what He can do for them. Verses 6 through 8, if the watchman does not sound the alarm and warn the people, then their blood is on the hands of the watchman. Oh my, look at this. It says, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood shall I require at the watchman's hand. Oh my. Mm -hmm. I wonder about that. I wonder about that myself. I tell you, it's amazing. It's amazing this Word of God. How it will speak to you. How it will let you know. I, I know right now because there's, there's memories flashing through my mind of people that I should have witnessed to, that I should have told about the love of God, but I didn't. Yeah. It's flashing through my mind as we read these verses today because I don't know where they stand with the Lord. Oh my. It's perilous times that we're living, folks. If the watchman does not sound the alarm, oh, if you go asleep to sleep at the wheel, it's a sad story. This, this truck driver up there in Greensboro this week went to sleep at the wheel of an 18-wheeler there was a group of motorcycles. You know the story. You've probably seen it on the news. On the side of the road. I don't know if they were resting or somebody had some trouble. But that truck driver fell asleep. And he veered off the side of the road. And just went through that group of motorcycles. And just flattened it. Killed one. And I think four are still in the hospital. I say to you today that somebody needed to sound the warning. Yeah. Somebody need to wake up that, that truck driver. Amen. And I say to you that we're driving a big truck. And if we go to sleep at the wheel, if we go to sleep at the wheel, we're going to be accountable for those that we pass along the way Amen. that we don't tell about the Jesus that saved us. Amen. If we don't share the grace that He's extended to us, if we don't tell this world what He's done for us, it's on our hands. It's on us. Again, if the watchman does not sound the alarm and warn the people, then their blood is on the hands of the watchman. The watchman was of vital importance then. And know this, child of God, disciple of Jesus Christ, they are just as important today. Yes. They're just as important today. Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, verses 16 and 17, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel yes. to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Mm -hmm. He said to every creature, red, yellow, black, or white, they're all precious in His sight. Yeah. Every creature needs to hear the gospel. The Lord has commissioned us, His disciples, to be watchmen Amen. on the wall. Amen. John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus our Lord, sounded out the warning. Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, He said, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Listen, I don't know about you, but I'll be that crazy man. I'll be that crazy man that stands out there in Walmart parking lot saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because, brothers and sisters, it is at hand. Amen. 
We are facing uncertain days. Amen. It could be just any day that Jesus brings it or comes and takes us home. And I certainly don't want to be ashamed when I stand before Him. I don't want to be ashamed of my life when I stand before Him. The Apostle Paul took his commission seriously. He said in Acts chapter 20, verses 25 through 27, And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. You see, Paul took uh, uh, those words that are penned in Ephesians 5.18. Be not drunk with wine, where it is excess, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. Be ye filled with the Holy Spirit of God. That's what we need. Yeah. That Holy Ghost filling, brother and sister, oh, will yeah. cause you to have the fear that you need of a thrice holy God. Right. We've lost that fear. Right. We've lost the fact that there is a hell. You think about this. As a matter of fact, I believe William Booth said this. He trained all those men and those women that worked with the Salvation Army in how to win people to the Lord. And he said if he could, if it were possible, the last 24 hours of their training would be hanging head first over a devil's hell so that they could see the wickedness and the vileness and how just brutally uh, uh, the damnation of hell was. I say to you tonight, we need to get a picture of that place called hell. We need to see it firsthand so that we can have a desire in our heart to win those lost people that are headed there at break next week. I mean, in a big way, folks are just heading down a devil's hell. But I say to you today, they're being led by people that think they're all right. Yeah. Yeah. They're being led by people that think that they're all right. Oh, this crowd out in Dallas. You're all right, and I'm all right, and everybody's all right. Yeah. Listen, we're not all right. We're not all right. Sin is just as prevalent, even more so today, than it ever has been. I say to you, we need the Lord. Amen. And there's people in your community, your neighbors. There's people in your workplace. There's people in your family. There's people in my family that need the Lord. Amen. They need to hear the gospel message. They know where you live before you got saved. They know how you live before you got saved. Tell them what Jesus done for you Amen. since you got saved. Listen, we're not perfect. And I want you to know I'm not perfect tonight. But I want to be clear of all man's blood, like Paul said. I want to be clear because I have not shunned to declare the gospel or the counsel of God. What then must we do? What then must we do, child of God? What must we do? Oh, we must sound the alarm. Can I read something from the New Testament to you? Turn, if you will, to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. Quickly tonight, I'll finish with this. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. Paul here writing to the church at Thessalonica. Verse 1, Paul says, uh, according to the Word of God here, the Holy Spirit being His inspiration, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus under the church of the Thessalonians, which is... Uh, in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father, Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us, and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So that ye were in samples, or examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God would spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. 
For they themselves showed of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols, to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Yeah. Notice with me verse 8. Paul is talking about the witness of this church. You see, their witness was clear. He said, from you sounded out the word of the Lord. They were not out to, uh, they were not out in the open with their, they were, excuse me, they were out in the open with their faith. They were not silent saints. They were not, they were not sitting on the premises. They were, uh, they were uh, sitting on the promises, not on the premises. They were doing the work of God. They lived their faith conspicuously. Their faith was clearly recognizable. There was no difficulty knowing that these believers were Christians. It says, it says here, for they, excuse me, verse 8, for uh, from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God will be spread abroad. He said they had a clear presentation. Mm -hmm. Secondly, their witness was a, with conviction. He said you sounded out. This gives an idea of a trumpet blast. Yeah. This is an idea of that watchman that was on the wall. Sounded the alarm. Yeah. Letting the folks know that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Their witness was not muffled or watered down. It was clear and it was plain. Paul said uh, here in verse 8 in the latter part, so that we need not speak anything. He said these folks know the truth. They've heard the gospel. They know what's been said. They know what they've been taught because you had a clear, convicting presentation of the gospel. Thirdly, their witness was continuous. They didn't quit. Oh, me, we need to sound out this alarm. The Bible says, sound it out. This is a Greek term uh, in the perfect tense which indicates a continuous action. Uh, their witness was uh, not hit and miss. It was not when I had time. Uh, it was not uh, 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 something that was a happenstance. It was continuous. Not for a few days until the excitement wore off. It went on day after day, uh, which was the proof of their faith and the earnestness of their service. Notice with me also in verses 9 and 10. I want to show you a contrast here. Look with me in verse number 3, and I'm, I'm closing. In verse number 3, he says that uh, we're remembering without ceasing your work of faith. Hold your finger on that work of faith and look over here in verses 9 where it says, Turn to God from idols. You see, their work of faith was that they turned to God from idols. That's good, brother. Their work of faith was that they turned to God from those pagan idols and, and put their faith and their trust in the one and true, only true God. Notice also it says in verse number 3, and labor of love. What was their labor of love? Look in the latter part of verse number 9. Serving the living and true God. You see folks, what are we to do today? We're to sound the alarm. How do we sound it? It's a work of faith. Amen. It's a labor of love. You see, it's turning to God from idols and serving the living and the true God. And lastly, it says in verse number 3, and patience of hope. Verse 10, the first part says, and to wait for His Son. You see, the patience of their hope was to wait for that promised Messiah, that one that was to, to come to redeem them, to redeem you and I from our sin. Their work of faith was to turn to God from idols. Their labor of love was to uh, serve the living and true God and their patience of hope was to wait for Him. <laughs> Listen, folks, I don't know about you tonight, but if we're going to be a watchman on the wall, we're going to have to have a labor of love. We're going to have to have a moment when God spoke to our heart and showed us we were lost and undone without Him. We're going to have to trust Him and turn to Him from those idols, those things, those, those high places that the children of Israel seem to have a hard time tearing down that are in your life. We need to tear those things down. Anything that hinders your walk with the Lord, anything that keeps you from communion with Him. You know, uh, uh, some people put uh, little pet sins in their life. They have these things they fold up and they put way back in the dark recesses of their heart. You got any of them? i got a few of them myself. I mean, we all do like this, but what I'm saying tonight is we need to get rid of those things. We need to lay those things to the side and say there's nothing as important as witnessing about our Lord and Savior to those who are lost to die. Sound the alarm. Why, preacher? Why? Why do we need to sound the alarm? Because when we stand before God, there's going to be blood dripping off our hands. And it's not your blood. It's the blood of those that you refused to witness to, that you walked by and didn't say anything to. I ask you this question in closing. Are you sounding the alarm? 
Are you letting this world know that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun? Oh my. We need to tell this world today, folks, there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen, brother. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Let me read one verse. Paul said to this same church, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble mind. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. Notice what he says. We exhort you. Paul said, I beg you. Tell them. I beg you. Tell them. I beg you to tell them. I beg you to warn them. Yeah. To comfort them. Mm -hmm. Support them. Oh, be patient. Yes. You see, that's where it's at right there. Take that verse right there. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 Take that verse and go home and read it. And ask God to put someone in your life that you can warn. Mm -hmm. That you can comfort. That you can support. Oh, that you can be patient for. You may already have somebody in your mind. Begin praying. Ask God to give you an opportunity to witness, to, to, to share the gospel with that person. Ask God to do the talking. Ask God to be the one that gives you the words to say to penetrate that heart. Listen, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If it's not done through Him and His Holy Ghost, it'll never get done. Amen. Amen. We have to trust Him. Put it in His hands. Are you sounding the alarm? Oh, I, I'm afraid that there's many that are just playing church today. That are just playing games with the Lord. Oh my, just, just using the Lord as fire insurance. Let's do something here just for a moment. And I'll close. With every head bowed and every eye closed, let me ask you this question. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I just want us to look within our own selves tonight. If you could be a better witness, would you lift your hand and ask God to help you tonight? If you could be a better witness, Amen. I see your hands all over the building. Amen. Let me pray for you tonight. Let me ask God to be your strength, to be your wisdom, to be your knowledge, to give you courage to witness in this lost and dying world. Can I do that? Everybody that raised your hand, let me pray for you. There's someone I'm sure on your heart and I'll continue to pray. It'll be a part of my everyday prayer life to pray for you to be a witness to that person that God's put on your heart. Oh, we need to sound the alarm. Let's pray together and we'll close. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for this opportunity to preach. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to sound the alarm, to sound the warning to your people that we need to be a watchman that sees the enemy approaching and is not afraid to say, Jesus saves. He loves you. He died for your sin. And to share the gospel message, to share the hope that we have inside of our own hearts with those and our families and our, our acquaintances and our, our co-workers and, and our neighbors that, that they need to be saved. Lord, help us. Give us compassion. Give us love in our voices as we try to witness. Help us not to be uh, uh, overbearing, but help us to do all things in love filled with the Holy Ghost, usable in thy sight. We love you tonight. Bless all these, Lord, that raised their hand and those that couldn't. Lord, I pray you'd bless. Have your perfect will and way. Bless this good church. Father, I pray that you'd bless their pastor as he's on vacation. Give him, uh, Lord, a good time. Just recharge his batteries. Bring him back to this place with excitement to serve and to be the pastor of this church. Father, I pray you'd help each of us as we go out these doors to be a witness. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.